Well, welcome again to another episode of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we want to talk a little bit about a pastor in Florida at the old church of Dr. D. James Kennedy. Pastor's first name is Tullian, and he is the grandson of famous evangelist Billy Graham. And he began to pastor this church in Coral Ridge, Florida, Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, the famous church uh, that Dr. D. James Kennedy, the the respected uh, Christian broadcaster, founded and pastored for many decades. And you've probably seen D. James Kennedy on television. He also uh, pioneered the Evangelism Explosion Program. So he's very well known, and then he died uh, about uh, 15 or 20 years ago. And the church eventually hired the grandson of Billy Graham. His name is Tullian, and I won't even try to pronounce his last name because I always mangle it. So I'm just going to say uh, Pastor Tullian. He was a young man, and he immediately began to update the church and implement some changes, which is not atypical. It usually happens when a new pastor comes to a new church, and the church began to thrive, and people began to come, and more and more people attended, and for all outward uh, fruit of the ministry of, of this Pastor Tullian, everything was fine. And he was speaking around the country, he was writing articles for major publications, and he was really rising. You might say he's a rising star in the evangelical Christian world. Well, about a year or so ago, it was revealed that this Pastor Tullian had had an affair, and he was forced to resign from his church. And he went through counseling program and reconciliation program and rejuvenation program and counseling and rehab and he wanted to rehabilitate himself and get back into ministry and do some more things for the cause of Christ. And so another uh, large church in Florida, not his original church, but another church well-known, hired him as a staff member because, of course, Tullian still has many gifts and talents and didn't want to put those to waste. So he's working at this other church, and then it was revealed that he had actually had an affair with a second woman. And that church let Tullian go and, and, and released him from ministry duties because of this revelation that was not foreclosed. It wasn't presented by Tullian and told to the church before he was hired. And so here's a man who has so much talent and such a great opportunity. He had, had a, Billy Graham was his grandfather, and he had such a platform, and apparently everything was right. But inside, morally speaking, he was transgressing the will of God. And the secret came out, and it stripped him of all of his ministry opportunities. And I just read an article by him, and we're going to look at that article. And my first impression is he is still in need of counseling because it's all centered on himself. It's all self-centered. And I don't know whether it's this individual particularly or it's his generation, but I have a suspicion that the millennial generation and the generation just before the millennials, the tail end of the Gen X, have grown to think that self-centeredness, self-absorption is a normal thing, but it's not. According to the scripture, we are to think, we are to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. We are taught to be humble and have humility. Well, we're going to read through this article of Tullian's and we're going to expose a error of this generation, the current generation, and that is thinking too highly of themselves. Even when they are in sin, even when they've been caught, there's still this desire to build oneself up instead of coming in humility and saying, 
Um, this was on me. This is my fault. And I don't want to talk about myself. I want to talk about God. And I want to not do this anymore. And so forth. And repentance and confession. There needs to be a entire generational flip-flop from self-absorption to otherness. And so I want to read through this article. We're going to cover that, and then I'm going to come back and close out our program. So let's read along and see if we can learn something from this. Okay, we're going to review the article here by cnsnews.com. The title is, I Actually Wanted to Kill Myself, Billy Graham's Grandson Reveals Battle with Depression. And the article is by Mark Judge, published on September 30th, 2016. And so let's get into the article. There's a picture of Tullian, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Chavigian. Chavigian, I think, but I won't say it, so I won't mangle it. I'm not sure exactly of the pronunciation, but Tullian is the young man. I think he's now 30-something possibly 40 by now, but he is the grandson of Billy Graham, and he is no longer in ministry, as we'll find out uh, with this ministry uh, uh, report uh, in CNS News. The article states, how did I get to this point of total desperation? How did I arrive at that dark place where I actually wanted to kill myself? Those are the words of Tullian Chivigian, a former Christian pastor and grandson of Billy Graham. Writing in the website expastors.com, Chivigian deplored the actions that led him to contemplate suicide. In 2015, Chivigian resigned as senior pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church after admitting to an adulterous affair on August 11th, he was deposed as a minister of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church by the South Florida Presbytery. And I'm not exactly sure what denomination it is. I know it's not PCUSA. That's the more liberal Presbyterian Church. It is either the OPC, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, or PCA, and I don't believe it's the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. There are a number of Presbyterian churches that have broken with the United um, Presbyterian Church in the USA, U, uh, PCUSA. And they have broken because of the liberalism, the rampant liberalism of the PCUSA. And there are at least three major denominations, the OPC, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, and the PCA that have broken. I'm not sure. I think the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church is either OPC or PCA. In 2016, after being hired as Director of Ministry Development at Willow Creek Church in Winter Springs, Florida, Chavigian was fired from his position following the disclosure of a second affair which he had occurred during the time at Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church. So he was hired by another pastor uh, and his church in Florida to utilize his gifts and talents as a minister and who he was going through uh, counseling and rehab. Seemingly things were on the up and up and yet an, a disclosure of a second affair uh, prompted his firing from this second church. So he wasn't uh, fully uh, disclosing everything that had happened uh, during the time he was with Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, which is sad. Two things had come to be I had come to believe were secure forever, apart from my relationship to God. Were my 21-year marriage and my calling as the senior pastor of the historic Coral Ridge in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Chavidjian writes, both came crumbling down during the spring and early summer of 2015. He continues, 
What I see now that I couldn't see then is that this explosion had been building for a few years. The shift from my locating my identity in the message of the gospel to locating my identity in my success as a messenger of the gospel was slow and subtle. It came on like the slow creep of the tide rather than a sudden tidal wave. I painfully learned that the more you anchor your identity and self-worth in something or someone smaller than God, the pain you will experience when you lose it all. So he, upon reflection, realizes that he was locating his identity as being the messenger of the gospel um, instead of locating his identity in the message of the gospel and you know when you're when everything has been stripped away from you when you are having to go through this crisis um, you start reflecting on things like that and I'm sure that this has come as a revelation to him that he was basically he was thinking too highly of himself he was thinking of himself as this successful messenger, this successful preacher, this successful personality that everyone looks at, sort of like in the celebrity world, he became a celebrity. He became a Christian celebrity. And people were coming up to him and they wanted him to speak and they wanted him to comment and they wanted him to write articles. They wanted his opinion. They wanted his picture. They wanted to interview him on radio and television. And he began to, I think it's pretty obvious, think more highly of himself than he ought. We are commanded in scriptures to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. And it looks like he was shifting in his thinking uh, from someone who we presume was a humble servant of God to begin with into some kind of uh, celebrity and with an ego and I he probably wouldn't have admitted that during his days during his prime but that's probably what was happening but this is all psychological analysis he's he's self analysis analyzing himself he's probably gone to many hours of counseling and so maybe a counselor uh, also helped him come to see what was going on uh, but that really doesn't uh, explain what went on let's go further uh, Chavigian observes that his confidence was severely misplaced confidence in status reputation power and position the way I spoke, the praise I received, financial security and success. In other words, confidence in things that were smaller than God and his grace. Confidence in things that were unstable and fleeting and easily taken away. My question is, why was he falling for those idols? The financial security, the success, the praise... Uh, the status, he says, the reputation, the power position. Uh, why did he fall for those things? Uh, didn't he realize that those were temptations? Didn't he realize that status is a temptation? That Satan would use status as a temptation to try to bring about his fall? Didn't he realize that his reputation as a successful young up-and-coming Christian leader would be used by Satan to tempt him to have vanity and pride and think more highly of himself than he ought uh, or power temptation to power you know we see this in politicians all the time we see this in the world the power and the position but didn't it occur to him that these were things that were temptations and that Christian leaders had to be careful with them just like any other person, just like politicians, just like people of the world are led astray by these things, these idols. Uh, the scripture says, keep yourself from idols. Paul admonishes Christians, keep yourself free from idols. And didn't uh, Tullian see these as potential 
threats to his ministry and his Christian walk and his relationship with God. I, it's, it's hard to believe that um, you can have a minister who didn't know these things, didn't know that there were temptations to power, temptations to status, temptations to reputation. And also, where were the people around him? Does he, does he have a, a board of elders? Uh, if it's a Presbyterian church, I'm sure he does have an elder board. And where were they? And what were they saying? And were they, were they, were they seeing the same thing? And I, I just, it's unfathomable that someone in a Christian ministry position like this could be so naive to temptation. I mean, has he not read Pilgrim's Progress? Has he not been exposed to messages and sermons and admonitions and warnings about worldly success, status, reputation, power, position, money, security? I mean, it just seems like uh, that anyone in a position such as him would have already identified these as threats to the Christian life and would have preached on these as threats to the Christian life. Hmm, I'm wondering, did he preach messages to the people at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church about warning them about status and reputation and power and position and money and success and financial gain and the love of money and the love of fame and all these other things did he not warn people about that you know it makes you wonder you know what what kind of sermons was he preparing and giving to the people because if he had to give sermons from the word of god uh, he would have uh, seen that a lot of the things that uh, he was encountering were we're already warned about in the Bible. And uh, and certainly he must have known that these things were threats, but it, it didn't seem like he uh, took that threat seriously. Let me go on here. It says, the pastor concludes. Okay, because I had ex existentially located my significance in things smaller than God, my loss did not simply usher in grief and pain and shame and regret. It ushered in severe identity crisis. Without these things and people that I had come to depend on to make me feel like I mattered, I was no longer knew who I was. I felt dead, therefore I might as well be dead. So again, he's doing a lot of psychological analysis of how he felt, how he feels. Um, this is kind of the thing that, that kind of bothered me when I read the article the first time. Um, there's all this psychological self-introspection and trying to figure out, you know, why he did what he did. But I don't hear a lot of talk of, uh, I acted foolishly, I was stupid, I was dumb, I was naive, uh, I take full responsibility. I uh, was flippant about powerful idols in my life that I didn't take seriously. I brushed them off as to no threat. I foolishly entered into uh, satanic battle without uh, f being fully equipped. Um, I don't see self-criticism here. I see a lot of attempt to psychologically understand why his self-esteem went down after all of this and why he didn't feel like much. And, you know, the kind of psychological analysis you might hear from anybody, you know, a celebrity in rehab, um, you, Britney Spears, uh, after she melted down a few years back, uh, this is the kind of analysis you might have gotten from her, that she was looking to her music for self-worth instead of looking to other things. You know, it, it's kind of, um, it's not a, <laughs> I don't think it's a biblical Christian uh, approach to to something like this when, when someone uh, betrays a trust. And that's what he did. As a minister, you are 
called to not only teach but to model and to be uh, a Christian and you have to keep yourself uh, spiritually fit and morally fit because your life will influence other people that's why James says in the book of James he says let not many of you be teachers brethren because you know that you will uh, fall under a stricter judgment teachers and Christian leaders are not just uh, responsible for themselves they're responsible for the lives of many other people that they influence and so uh, when he had these affairs and it wasn't just one and it wasn't just a one-time thing it wasn't a one-time occurrence uh, now that we know he has had multiple affairs and so this was something that he was covering up and it wasn't just a one single foolish instance it was a ongoing thing and so he has got to come to grips with the fact that he betrayed a trust he has his testimony has been ruined the reputation of Christ and his church has been damaged and he needs to approach this in a humble and contrite spirit and not you know in this psychological uh, rehab kind of approach now it says the pastor concludes that his difficulties have ultimately been liberating oh so it's all turned out good because I've understood myself or whatever the journey God has taken me on over the last two years has been one of complete deconstruction not just externally but internally the exploration of who I am and who is God what is real what matters and so on has been one of pure stripping okay it has felt like my skin being painfully ripped from my bones yes because you acted in a dishonoring way to God and you brought the name of Christ into disrepute and you did this a number of different times and yes this is the price that you pay and this is somewhat of a judgment from God for what you did and hopefully you won't do that again and you will have learned from your foolishness just when I think I can't take any more God seems to dig deeper as painful as it has been however it has also been very liberating as my counselor and mentor told me the other day the purpose behind the suffering you are going through is to kick you into a new freedom from false definitions of who you are so what has bothered me about this article is it is centered on Tullian it's centered on him there's no talk about oh I'm so grieved about all the damage I've uh, uh, made and I've caused all this damage and this fallout and Christians have been hurt and there are people who have been turned away from Christianity and I feel so bad and I'm going to vow to be a better man it's all about him it's like oh this is liberating for me actually I had to go through all of this to find out who I really am this is not the approach that a Christian needs to take the purpose behind the the suffering you are going through is to kick you into a new freedom from false definitions of who you are it's all about him so true death before resurrection has always been and will always be God's mode of operation dark depression has always produced deep deliverance that is my hope that is my only lifeline so this article is very self-centered now to be fair I'm only reading portions of the interview and there may be portions where he really gets into self contrition repentance confession humility and uh, and not focusing on his own self-esteem it seems to be that his counseling centers around how he's regaining his self-esteem which really is not the most important thing in his life right now he really needs to um, be a servant and be a humble servant 
and asked God that if possible, God could use him for something else in life and so that he could be of help to other people and not focus on himself and his self-esteem getting back in touch with himself and so on and so forth. This is a characteristic of the later generations that we have in our culture today in the West. It's all about me. It's all about myself. Um, when people do terrible things, and this pastor did a terrible thing, um, and had multiple affairs, when he does that, um, he shouldn't be, uh, his goal should not be to get his self-esteem back in line. Uh, his goal should be to simply learn how to be a Christian who walks with God and who uh, wants to look to God for his very life and every step and not uh, focus on how God can, um, you know, help him uh, overcome and be successful and be victorious. And so, and not talk about liberating and um, all of this uh, psychological terminology. He needs to be uh, taking a truly biblical approach, and I hope he does. We need to pray that this young man can um, humble himself, uh, learn from his awful mistakes, and that God could actually use him again in a greater way with humility this time, not the big shot celebrity Christian grandson of Billy Graham uh, billing, but just uh, Tullian, um, Christian, who's bowed his knee to Christ and is willing to do whatever for the kingdom of God and for God's glory. So I hope that's uh, been a reminder to us all. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about God. And we need to keep that in perspective whenever we go through life, the successes, or the failures. It's all about God and not focus on the self. Well, this is Jeff Short again, and I've just done the reading of that letter and interview by Tullian, uh, which I said I would not try to pronounce his last name. I'm not going to. But his grandson of Billy Graham, famous evangelist, he had to step down because of immorality in his life and I think you will agree that he still needs to go through counseling he needs to be humbled he needs to be humiliated and then he needs to learn the lessons of what that does and that means that you don't put self first that you don't talk about yourself all the time that you don't have self-referential projects Everything is not revolving around Tullian. It revolves around God in his glory. So that's a good lesson for all of us. Let us never be guilty of self-centeredness. Let us never think that life revolves around us the way the planets revolve around the sun. No, our lives need to be revolving around God, and we need to show that with our humility in life, especially when we have fallen into sin and have disgraced the name of Christ. So I hope that's been a lesson to all of us. We can all learn from this by watching what has happened to others. We can avoid their errors. Let's try that. All right, God bless. We'll see you back here on another episode.